On the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line is the new head coach of Notre Dame football, Marcus Freeman, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Coach? I'm doing great, Rich. How are you doing? I'm doing better for talking to you. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. You are welcome. Let's get right down to it. The most important question I could ask you. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie, Coach? <laughs> what do you think? Is, he, is, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Coach of Notre Dame football. Absolutely. Absolutely. My man! Coach. Coach. <laughs> I'm going to run through a brick wall right now. I'm going to play like a champion today, Coach. You really feel that way? You've got six children. Do you show this to your children and say, this is a Christmas movie, Coach? Is that what you do? You know what? We watch it during Christmas time, so I would consider it a Christmas movie in this discussion. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Makes sense to me. All right. All right. uh, So does that make uh, the coach a diehard truther, or am I I, I the diehard uh, conspiracy theorist? Is that what I'm doing right now? Yeah, you're on the conspiracy side. Nobody's asked you that yet in your media tour yet, huh? I'm the first to do (laughs) that at least, right? That's the first for sure. That's the first. Okay, how about this? (laughs) Have you seen Rudy? Have you seen the movie Rudy? Multiple times. Now you, I made my kids watch it the day, the day I was named defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. My kids watched it, so I've watched it multiple times. <laughs> okay, so you're you you are oh, hired man. from Cincinnati. You go to Notre Dame, and this is not too long ago, right? It was uh, just at the top of this year, correct? When yeah, this happened, eleven months. Wow. Eleven months ago. What a ride. Okay, so then you so you you're like I I have now been hired by Notre Dame. We're watching Rudy. Okay. No doubt. Hmm. No doubt. I got him. Listen, I got him some some Notre Dame gear, and I had to convince him like this is this is the greatest thing ever known to man. And so the first thing we had to do is we had to watch the movie Rudy, and they were all in after we watched that. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> have you spoken to the actual Rudy since your your? I have heart? not. I have not. But our offensive coordinator Tommy Reese mm-hmm. said he is going to facilitate facilitate that introduction. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure at some point here soon I'll get a chance to meet him. I am sure he will clear his schedule to talk to you, sir. I am. I am sure. And so, meanwhile, you're you're flying around the country recruiting people all about heart, right? Five foot nothing. You're you're recruiting Rudy's now, correct? That's what that's what you're going for right now. Yeah, right? that's probably not the the number one <laughs> guy we're going to be recruiting. You know, I would love the heart. Yes, you know the heart aspect of it. Yes, yes I agree with that. But the the size, the the speed, uh, we're looking for a little bit more elite talent. You're not used to wearing green very much, are you? In your life, football life, Marcus Freeman, right? No, no, no. This was the uh, first time oh, I've ever put on green. My Except word, St. Patty's Day. So, so let's let's walk into this here. Uh, I, I mean, can you even believe your year? I mean, you're hired as a defensive coordinator from Cincinnati, and now you're the head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Coach, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it is. Would you imagine? that you would be the head coach of Notre Dame 11 months ago or 11 days ago? Absolutely not. Um, obviously, this is the one of the premier head coaching jobs in all of college football. And so, you know, at, at times I have those moments where I say, wow, you're the head coach at Notre Dame. And, and then soon thereafter, I'm, I'm in another household or I'm recruiting another kid or I'm talking to somebody else. And so you don't have much time to think about it. Um, but there are those surreal moments that you just – Go back and be appreciative of, of the opportunity you have, and they, and it's kind of it's kind of wild as well. Um, you know, obviously that you know uh, you mentioned eleven days ago, even right. So, did you get any indication throughout the year that Coach Kelly had wanderlust or had soured on an experience potentially um, at Notre Dame at all? No, not at all, not one bit, and. and if anything, it was more confirmation that he was never going to leave this place. And so um, I was just as surprised as anybody else um, in the country other than maybe Coach Kelly. Hmm. And that call came just when? Like a week ago, maybe uh, yesterday, it right? Monday. It, was a, it was a Monday. Um, right. When he called me, I was in a high school um, seeing a committed kid and, and – I missed five phone calls, and I said, okay, I need to go outside and, and return Coach Kelly's phone call, and, and I did, and he told me that he was taking the job at LSU and and wanted me to to come be his defensive coordinator. And so at that moment when you say I'm going to be the head coach at LSU, my first thought was, oh, shoot, I need a job. I don't know who's going to be the next head coach at Notre Dame. And he said, would you come? I said, absolutely. I said, just let me ask my wife. And from that moment um, when I said let me ask my wife has been just a whirlwind of transition from me to – being deep as a coordinator, uh, maybe at Notre Dame, maybe at LSU, to now head coach at Notre Dame. Yeah, what? Walk me through how your head must have been swimming. You're in a high school talking to a committed kid. 
did you say anything to that kid at the moment? I mean, like, what do you do? Like, how do you no, I just, prepare for well, this? You just, yeah, I walked outside to talk to him. And, and you know, what I did was I, I kind of um, called my wife and said, wow, this just happened. Yeah. Um, and I went to the kid's house. And then it's, the report started coming out, you know, started hitting Twitter and all these things. And, and this was in, within hours. This was within hours that it was happening. And so um, by the time I got home, you know, it was um, kind of like, I don't know what's going to happen. And so I got a couple phone calls that Monday night from people that um, are really involved with Notre Dame football that kind of made me say, oh, hold on, is this really a possibility that I might be named head coach? And from that point till – when they named me head coach, um, it was a constant communication with Notre Dame and with different people that are affiliated with our football program and our university. Well, it's pretty cool. They, they so they, I imagine with all these moving parts, the school reached out to you right away to start giving you an indication that you were the guy, right? I mean, that they didn't see no dilly well, dally at all. I'd imagine. They, no, I got a call um, at some point, maybe late on that Monday or Tuesday. I can't rem- remember. I said, "Hey, would you be interested in interviewing?" for this position. And I said, absolutely. And so from that moment, I was like, Oh, is this real? I mean, yeah. they could just be interviewing me just to say they're interviewing me. And, uh, but that obviously interview turned into a, um, an opportunity where they offered me the head coaching position. Did you, re- who else did you reach out to? I mean, who else is in your, in your inner circle other than, than your wife and, well, and this process, yeah, your agent or to, who, um, I talked to a couple first time, um, you know, head coaches that I have known, um, one being Mike Brable, he's an Ohio State guy. Yes. Um, I played Ohio State, and I know Brable well, and I'm like, tell me, what, what is it going to be like? What are they going to ask me? What, what do you say sometimes when they say, hey, are you ready? And, I mean, and, and he was honest. Braves was honest. Like, hey, we're never, you're never ready until you get the opportunity to do it, and you learn on the fly. And so um, he kind of made me feel a little bit better about Hey, just go in there and be yourself. And that's the, the advice I've gotten from everybody, from Ryan Day to Luke Fickle to Jim Tressel and guys that I am that I know just from my Ohio State connection that, hey, you're going to have to be yourself. You cannot be Brian Kelly. You cannot be Luke Fickle. You can't be Jim Tressel. You've got to be Marcus Freeman and understand that you have to do this thing with whatever tra- characteristics that you did as a defense coordinator, whatever characteristics you had as a leader, uh, as a linebacker's coach, you're going to have to be that same person. But now you're in charge of an an entire football program, an entire Notre Dame organization. Well, clearly you've taken that advice to to heart, Marcus Freeman, because the video that was sent out by the school of you being introduced to the players in your suit and then you come in, it was it was awesome. I mean, that was a, what was that like for you? I mean, I'm just sitting watching it in the palm of my hand on my phone. But what was that moment like for you? It was very surreal. It was it was it seemed like a long time coming because I had known for probably 24 hours um, before that moment that hey, this this was really happening. Like it's going down, and so I was told, hey, you can't talk to anybody, don't communicate, like you stay in your home and kind of yeah. let's let's kind of let's go through all the HR stuff that has to be done before we can you know, present you to the team. And so um, it was like just a, 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 you know, a a sigh of relief just to go be around your guys. And that's all I wanted to do, man. I wanted to give them a a chance to hug them and and be around them and tell them thank you because they're the ones that kind of opened this window. They're the ones that, you know, kind of went to the AD and said, hey, we feel as a football team that, hey, we want this culture that we built to stay the way it is, we we think we have the best candidate in house, and and then it was the AD and the presidents, you know, there then they had to do their interviews and they had to figure out their nationwide search. Hey, what was the best um, leader for this program? And and they were the ones that finally made that decision. And uh, here we are. Some of the players did do that, huh? They did actually do that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And and the AD met with uh, Jack Schwarbert. Yep. He met with our captain and. And he said, you know, that was one of the most impactful times that he's ever had as an AD when they were so passionate about, you know, owning their culture and owning the leadership and, and owning, hey, we feel like this is what's best. We feel like we know what's best. We've won 11 games. We've, won, we've sustained this excellence. And it's not because of a one person. And um, they went to bat for me. And then, you know, again, thank you. I'm so thankful and grateful for the players. But, but then for, for Jack Schwarber and Father – Jenkins to actually make the decision to do it 
you know, to interview me and do a nationwide search and, and just say, you know what, hey, let's let's make this decision. That's what I'm forever grateful. Yeah, for. and and I also was thinking too, and I was watching that Marcus Freeman, head coach of Notre Dame football, here on the Rich Eisen show. I'm assuming it was in that same room that we saw in that video in that same spot that just, what, 24, 48 hours before Brian Kelly had called him, by the way, at 7 a.m. to come in to, to hear from him one last time. And those same guys, now it seemed like an immense amount of relief to see you walking in and the celebration because I imagine as well, you, you have an incredible, immense responsibility to these young men you're you're not just a coach you're you're a healer in a way would you agree with that yeah you you got to continue your job as leaders continue to put these guys in the best situation to be successful on the football field tactically and technically but also to be the one that gives these young people hope like they have to look at you and believe that you're going to be the reason a reason of why they are in a position to have success and so that's my job as the head coach of this team is continue to keep us together, continue to get us to believe that, hey, the things we're doing on the field and in the meetings rooms and, and in the weight rooms are going to be the reasons why we have success. Marcus Freeman here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Now, you had mentioned before you spoke to Vrabel and obviously Fickle, who was the guy who gave you the gig at Cincinnati, right? So, um, and, uh, and Trestle from, you know, Buckeye where, where you played. You said you were an, uh, an Ohio State guy. Is that the same as the Ohio State? <laughs> Coach, I'm confused. Is that the I think same? There's, there's, there's some people maybe outside the program that, that mm-hmm. love to use that term, D. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm an Ohio State guy. You know, and okay. that's what, hey, man, mm-hmm. and I don't, we don't try to, I don't try to make it seem like we're anything different than okay. anybody else. All right. I went to Ohio State. Okay, so you're not, <laughs> this is not going to become the Notre Dame University, no. right? No, okay, no, the no, University no. of Notre Dame. Okay, that will not happen. <laughs> and I'm assuming because you, you you know my background. I would assume. I don't know if you do Absolutely. or not. Okay, good. I, I, All right. So I, I so do. you were rooting for you were rooting for Iowa Saturday night, weren't you? You were right deep uh-huh. down. Uh, I was. I was. <laughs> I <still> was. <laughs> We're putting cards on the table. Out that way. All the cards yeah. are on the table here. Okay, so you were all right. Can, can do you do you think our my, my alma mater and, and your school could play each other a little sooner than what we got going on. What do you think? Can we get back on? Yeah. What do you think here? What do you think? I, I don't know. Fun? You know, it, it, it could possibly happen. Who knows? Who mm. knows? But, you know, my focus is getting this team ready for yeah. Oklahoma State on January 1st. <laughs> you, know, for the you should go up to yeah. him and say, you know, you should go up, to, go up to Gundy and say you're not yet 40, so you're not technically a man. Can you do that when you go <laughs> no. up there? Can you have fun with him? <laughs> technically? You know what? I might have to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to leave you better than when I found you. And even though everything seems to be going great for you, so um, I <laughs> I'm uh, a pleasure to have met you, um, sir. Con- you. Congratulations. What a ride for you and your family. My gosh. Going from, hey, kids, this is Rudy. This is dad's new uh, uh, place of business to you running the program within a matter of uh, months is remarkable. There's really not much like that. So uh, congratulations to you and yours. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I look forward to being back on here soon. No, I appreciate you saying that. And and good luck traveling the country and, and getting uh, the kids that you're looking for. And so, um, you know, uh, and congratulations to your family. This is a, this is a right. big moment for you guys. So have a good holiday. Thank you. I appreciate it, Rich. You bet it. That's Marcus Freeman, head coach of Notre Dame football. Nice. Right here on the Rich Eisen Show. That was great. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 